In 2010, it was reported there was over 4.4 million squatters across the United States. If we look at the headlines today, there has to be a heck of a lot more than that. Coast to coast, squatting has become a huge problem. Tonight, the growing crackdown on squatting. New York, Georgia, and Alabama. Today, we're going to be looking at the squatting problem across the United States and how it's affecting affordable housing. I also am going to share with you some of my tinfoil hat theories when it comes to this, because I think there's something else more behind it, something a little bit more nefarious. And then you can let me know at the end what you think if my tinfoil hat like hits on the mark for you. The concept of squatting isn't anything new. It's been around since the dawn of the Americas. The whole idea was that you basically find a piece of land and if you found that piece of land and over a period of time you maintained it and actually made it better for the community you were able to stake claim to that property and it now became yours it happens with other purposes of buildings as well you can actually find a house and if you've lived there for a period of time and you've paid all the bills and no one has staked claim to that specific property you can get something called adverse possession and then the property becomes yours and those are like the good cases. Those are the people that really want a piece of land or really wanted a piece of property. They maintained it and over a period of years they were able to get it. What we're talking about here are the squatters that are not necessarily doing the right thing. Uh, in that melee, if you will, there was seven other people in a house. Guns, drugs in the house, ketamine, children in the house, and according to the landlord, they haven't paid the rents in months. In Atlanta right now, it's estimated there's over 1,200 homes that were vacant that are now currently being occupied by squatters. Can you imagine being on active duty and you've served your country, you've paid your mortgage, you've paid your HOA, you made sure that the property is maintained and you can't get this guy out of your house. Lieutenant Colonel Dally Duray is with the U.S. Army Reserve. She was stationed in Chicago. That's her house in Atlanta. She claims that while she was on duty, this man, Vincent Simon, who has a lengthy criminal history, including convictions for drugs and guns and theft, moved into her home, started squatting there. That poor woman had to go through many legal hoops to finally get her out of the house. And they ended up finding a loophole that was able to evict him. But a lot of these people don't deserve to have a house in the first place. He had a long criminal record, and it's gonna be really difficult for him to find anything, even if he had the money. Most landlords do a background and credit check, and I can guarantee this guy's gonna have a hard time finding a house, anything to rent legally. And I know there's gonna be many of you out there that are saying, well, you know what? There's a lot of houses out there that are vacant. And if you actually look at the numbers, it's over 15 million homes in the United States are vacant currently. But that doesn't mean that people deserve to go into those houses for free. Everyone should have the choice of who can and cannot be in their home that they own. And I know a lot of people have several properties, but again, if you've maintained it, you have a mortgage, you have to maintain the insurance on it, and you've maintained the utilities on it, and somebody just moves in doing wear and tear and who knows, God knows what else in that home, they shouldn't have a right to the house. In some states, the protections are so bad, it can take years before they ever are evicted. In a lot of the cases, these squatters destroy the house. They have no respect for property. Of course they don't. That's why they are squatting in the first place. Over the last year, it has been an extreme influx of people that are occupying these vacant homes. And you're probably wondering, how are people able to find these homes? Well, come to find out there are accounts out there on Instagram that let people know that you could basically rent a house for a one-time payment of, let's just say, $1,400. And it's just a one-time payment and then you get the keys. You pay this guy and you walk in the door and it's now yours, not yours, illegally yours. At first glance, it's just another real estate pro hustling to rent homes on social media. So you will get a guaranteed six months rent free. But at one-time payment homes, the site makes it clear. These are squatter homes and spells out just what that means in a penned Insta story. The company owners will come out, so will the police. The police will tell you it's a civil matter. It's nothing they can do about it. Squatter's right. But what really takes the cake is that the homeowners can't kick them out, 
even though they took possession of the property illegally. And they tie these up in court as long as possible with fake leases. The owner of this house says you all broke into his house illegally nine days ago. So check this out. I'm about to tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh, we rented this property. Uh, uh, he says you didn't rent it. Well, I'm just telling you what we did. Okay. I don't know what he, you know what I mean, what's going on or whatever. He says there's no lease agreement, there's no rental there agreement, is nothing. One of our, on our end, there is one. Okay. And when the police show up, if the homeowners are there, they're arrested for trespassing on their own property. But it's not just happening in Georgia. It's happening in New York. It's happening in Florida. It's happening in California. It's happening in Texas. But some of these states are a lot more lenient when it comes to squatters, and it's much more difficult to remove them. But if you live in a state like mine, like Louisiana, it's a heck of a lot easier. Every state has their own rules when it comes to squatting. And just recently, the press secretary of the United States had a comment when it comes to squatting, and this is what she had to say. How worried do Americans need to be about squatters? About squatters? About squatters. There's a lot of stories out there. Homeowners are showing up at places that they own where the locks have been changed. Some squatter has moved in and the homeowner has no rights. Does President Biden think that is right? So if, if my understanding is that this is obviously uh, uh, a local issue. We are certainly tracking that issue. Uh, the rights of property owners and renters must be protected. And we believe that, uh, you know, ultimately, what needs to happen is the local uh, government needs to make sure that they address this and they take action. I don't know, call me crazy, but it didn't seem to you like that was the first time she'd ever heard about it. <laughs> I didn't really care for the response when it came to that. I do realize that this is a local problem when it comes to squatters because you have to deal with local courthouses. You have to work with local law enforcement to be able to remove these people. So you can't really make a, a blanket statement federally when it comes to squatting. Uh, you are not going to be able to commandeer somebody's private property. Uh, and expect to get away with it. Matter of fact, there was a movie in the 80s, I just remembered this, the, of Michael Keaton, and he came in and that's exactly what he did, he was a squatter. Carter Hayes has come to San Francisco. He will search for the perfect apartment. He will find the perfect landlords. And now, the game begins. I'm, uh, I'm your new tenant. So that clip of that movie you just saw, that was from the 80s. That's how good my memory is. <laughs> and it's a true story. That that guy tore their house up, and it took them years to get rid of him. California has some of the strictest laws against landlords when it comes to squatting. And this problem is going to get even worse. Like I said, we have over 15 million homes that are vacant. That doesn't mean that those 15 million homes are in disrepair. Even homes that are really nice, that happen to be vacant, in the most exclusive areas have squatters in them. Check out this clip. The pool looks like toxic soup. The mansion has been seized by alleged squatters and it's perhaps the most expensive property in the squatting epidemic afflicting America. Those squatters in that mansion have had parties. They have torn the place up. They took the curtains down and they hung up sheets. It is a total mess. They are having the hardest time getting rid of those people. And the squatters that live there say they have a right to be there because they have a fake lease. It's going to take them years, years to get rid of them, unless they have a law like they just passed in Florida. To the new state law that now allows squatters to be thrown out of homes that don't belong to them. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the bill this afternoon in Orlando. I'm going to break this down for you because I'm not going to read you the whole 10 page law, but it is. It's such a good law, such a good law. So let's talk about it. First of all, it's a quick removal of unauthorized occupants. Homeowners or their authorized agents can ask for help from local sheriff's office to quickly remove people from the property. Two, the conditions for removal. The property must have a residential dwelling. The occupants must have entered without permission and refuse to leave when asked. These occupants can be either current or former tenants under a valid agreement with the owner. Meaning if you have a lease, you can't just get kicked out from this law. Nor can they be family members. So if your family members are squatting in your house, you can't kick them out from this law either. There shouldn't be any ongoing legal disputes over the property involving these occupants. If you need to file a complaint, you can go to the sheriff's office. The owner and the agent must fill out a detailed complaint form swearing under penalty of perjury that they provide information is true. This this form includes affirmations of the ownership, the properties being residential, and the presence of the unauthorized occupants. 
So once that happens, the sheriffs receive a valid complaint. The sheriff can serve notice to vacate the unauthorized occupants, squatters, and help the homeowner regain possession of the property. The sheriff can arrest the occupants, yay, if they have legal cause such as trespassing. So fees and liabilities. Next is the law allows the sheriff to charge any fees for their service. Homeowners are not liable for any loss or damage to the occupant's property unless wrongly removed. However, if the homeowner wrongfully uses this process to remove someone, they can be sued for damages. So don't get sneaky. So let's talk about the criminal penalties. There are penalties for unlawful detaining or occupying residential property, especially if there's significant damage caused. Also, presenting false documents like a lease or a deed to claim rights over the property is penalized. So they can't come in with those sneaky fake documents and say, oh, I have a lease. And then of course it's not legal and they faked it. They're gonna get in trouble. And this law emphasizes that the homeowner's rights to control their property and aims to protect it from unauthorized use, theft, vandalism, and providing a quicker remedy to remove squatters and unauthorized occupants. I personally think it's a great law. Every state should do it, and more states are looking into it, including Georgia. Thank goodness, because it's become a real issue in the Atlanta area. But let's just say your state doesn't have a law like Florida. What is it that you can do if you're having a squatting problem in your specific area? First, I'm going to tell you to contact a lawyer and find out what you can legally do to remove these people. Do you have to meet with the justice of the peace like you would here in Louisiana to file certain kinds of paperwork? Can you change the locks to the property and I know a lot of people in the comments section will say well why don't they just cut off the utilities uh, to the property and then that way they don't even have access to utilities if we're talking about squatters if they don't have utilities they're just gonna burn candles they're going to poop wherever they want to poop they don't care they're living in a property for free and a lot of squatters that are really sneaky and know the system very well what they'll do is soon as they get into the property they call up the utility company and tell them hey i want to switch the utilities over in my name i'm now renting the property they send over that fake lease to the utility companies and now the utilities are in their name which makes it even more difficult for them to get off of that property a lot of these squatters are career squatters and they know exactly what they're doing so that's why they try to get the utilities put in their name because they know it's going to be more difficult to get them out of there but there is a guy that is called the squatter hunter he's quite a character his name is flash shelton and what he does is he squats on the squatters but he's not the only one that's doing this watch this clip may i have your permission to enter your domicile you have my permission may i have the keys sure. it's maybe you're a squatter trying to outmaneuver a squatter. Um, my attorney has the papers that says it's my house. Well, I brought my bathrobe. I think I'm going to go move in. Come with me. Totally interesting concept. So basically what happens is this, that you squat on the squatter. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that as soon as those people leave the building and it's empty, the person that is kind of the fake squatter <laughs> that's trying to get the other squatters out have a legitimate legal lease from the homeowners to allow them into the property. So they're able to walk into the property and sit down and say, I now have a lease to this property. I live here. And the people that are illegally squatting, of course, they throw a really big fit and they, they say they're not going to leave. But after a while, when you have some stranger living in your house constantly that's making a lot of noise, they get annoyed and they end up leaving. While I was doing research on this video, I was wondering what people could do to find a loophole to get rid of squatters if you happen to be in this situation. I ended up coming across this article from Fox News. By the way, nothing in this article, I'm going to save you the three minutes that it takes you to read it. There's nothing in there that tells you what you can do if you have a squatter in your specific area. The thing is, is this is what you have to do, is you're going to have to contact an attorney to understand the law in your specific area. It does not matter what state, city, county you're in. Everybody's going to have a different rule when it comes to squatting. But my best advice to you when it comes to this is always check with your local authorities when it comes to this. In Louisiana, you would check with the justice of the peace. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what we have to do here in Louisiana. Your state is going to have their own rules when it comes to handling it. By the way, squatting doesn't necessarily have to be in a piece of property that is vacant. 
It can also be on a plot of land that has no structure on it whatsoever. Just recently, a woman bought a piece of property in Hawaii for a deal during COVID. And she was very excited about her piece of property. And then she got a lawsuit in the mail for her piece of land because a builder built a house on it. Construction company built a half million dollar house on the wrong lot. Now the lot owner doesn't want the house and she's being sued. They're suing her for owning a piece of land and now she has squatters living there because they live on her piece of land where he built the house. The builder claims that she's being unreasonable because there are other lots in the neighborhood that she could move to. He's willing to purchase the piece of property, another one for her. They mistakenly built the house on that specific lot, and she wants money and damages. I think she has every right to ask for the damages. I don't know what builder builds on a piece of land that they don't own. Granted, it was a mistake, but anybody that does a survey knows where the piece of land is supposed to be. You're supposed to put, mark the four corners before you ever put anything up. In the meantime, this is going to be a legal issue for her and the builder. I hope, I hope that she gets her money, all of it, plus some, and another lot that's just as beautiful. Now it's time for me to share my tinfoil hat theory. This is based in absolutely no evidence whatsoever, but this is just how my brain thinks. Because as you know, corporate investing has gotten to be a huge problem across the United States. They keep kind of tucking that away like it isn't really a problem, but corporate investors have been buying up the most inexpensive homes across the United States. And if you don't remember, not too long ago, 60 Minutes featured a company called Tricon. Three bedrooms, two baths. It was built about three years ago. Gary Berman is CEO of Tricon Residential, a Toronto-based company that has quietly become one of the largest owners of single family homes in the United States. And they bought about 38,000 homes all over the Sun Belt over the last three years. That company was just bought out by guess who? So how does that even relate to the squatters? Well, let's just say that you are a corporate investor and you want to have an area of Atlanta that happens to have a lot of vacant homes because you can find that out from the tax assessor's office and it's easy for them to look up that information. What if a corporate investor like Tricon or BlackRock had a list and gave it to a young kid and said, hey, I want you to start an Instagram account for rental properties and offer it at such a ridiculous price and you get to pocket all the money. All you have to do is advertise these houses. And not only that, so your tenants get to stay in the houses as much as possible. Here's all the legal documents that you need to tie it up in the court system for as long as possible. And you're thinking, well, how the heck does this really help corporate investors? Well, what if the corporate investor came into the homeowners and said, hey, I heard that you have this squatting problem and it's causing you a lot of headache. Why don't I take this property off your hands for, of course, a discounted price because, you know, you have these squatters here. It's going to cost us a lot of money in court documents to get them out. But we'll help you. We're going to help you get out of the property and we'll buy it from you so you no longer have the headache. There's going to be a lot of people that take that option because it is quite a headache. Then the corporate investors even own more of that specific area, dictating market price for that specific area as well. And they've been doing it. If you watch any of my videos, that's exactly what corporate investors have been doing, dictating exactly how much homes have been selling for and how much their rent is going up. And that's all they want to do is turn them into rentals. I'm not saying I have any evidence on this at all, but it makes complete sense to me in my brain, but you let me know. The other reason I think that we're hearing about this more and more and more is because of the fact that it's an election year and a lot of politicians are trying to get reelected or elected. And this is one of those campaign promises they can make that brings both sides together. There isn't anybody that owns a home that is gonna be really thrilled with having squatters in their area. So you, if you have a campaign promise of removing squatters and having a law much like the one in Florida, that's gonna get a lot of people on your side and it can win you a lot of votes. So I think this is one of those things that it's a campaign issue. It doesn't divide the party lines 
and it makes politicians look good and like they're doing something for the community. And if they do and they do pass it, it does help the community. So I that's the other reason. I don't know if that's necessarily tinfoil hat reason, but it definitely makes sense to me. But you let me know in the comments section below. To watch more videos about affordable housing, you're gonna wanna watch these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.